Hello at last, David Hello. Chen. My name is Sebastian Ochoa. As you may recall, I have autism. We meet at last, my yes. good friend, AKA Hogan from What If. <laughs> That's right. Nice to meet you, Sebastian. Nice to meet you too, buddy. I've been waiting a long time to gang in touch with you just like I did with so many others for the last few months. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <clears throat> I have lots of questions I wanted to ask you. Okay, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Tell me, how is it like being a voice actor in many animated shows? <laughs> the easiest answer to say is it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's great being able to do something that um, I just love doing. Um, I've watched cartoons and played video games all my life, and to be able to be associated with something like that uh, is the best feeling in the world. I see. So this is what makes you very really good at, at being a voice actor, which leads you to one question. No. How did you get into voice acting? Hmm. Well, I actually started acting later on in my life. Uh, I actually went to college first and got a business degree and worked in the corporate world on Wall Street for a few years. I didn't know quite what I wanted to do, uh, so I just did the uh, usual route of going to school and learning something that I thought was important. And when I was there, I realized that uh, I wanted to do something else. So I decided to take a risk and wanted to become an actor. And once I decided that I wanted to become an actor, I, I knew I wanted to become a voiceover actor specifically for animation and video games. I see. So this is how you became a voice actor for many shows. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, there is one question, though. But why do you like playing in a lot of animated shows? I like playing in animated shows because you get to be a whole different range of pe of characters, people. They're not just humans. They don't have to be just what I look like. And they can be very outgoing and fun and silly, uh, which is what I like to do. I like to be as silly as I can. And I feel like in cartoon and animation, I get a chance to do that. I see. So this is what makes you so good at playing in, in a lot of things. Which, speaking of all the characters, there are many things I like to ask about the characters, but... <clears throat> In the game Rage 2, what was your favorite part about playing the character Demonin Chow? <laughs> Denim Chow. Oh, he was fun. Um, he was a the equivalent of a futuristic bartender. So he had lots of advice to give his friends, and he was a friendly guy. So he reminded me of the the wise person in the sit in the town who was willing to help and make friends with anybody and was willing to talk to anybody who needed, uh, who was willing to listen. So he was a lot of fun to play, to be him. I see. So that's what makes you very good at playing that character. From what I can tell, I actually played the game Rage 2. And I must say, I'm very impressed with that voice of yours playing that character. <laughs> Thank you. It's what I do. But anyway... <clears throat> What was the biggest thing when you when playing Go Go Dugo in the movie Bell? Mm. What was the biggest thing? Yes, that one was a fun one to know that uh, such a well received movie was coming to the to North America with an English cast. Um, to be invited to be part of such a beautiful movie was probably the biggest highlight, and working with the team that that brought brought it together, uh, and also again. Uh, Doggo Gogo was a very silly character, and that was that's something that I, uh, that is not me, so or at least not me in appearance. So it was a very fun time to be able to be part of playing something so silly in such a wonderful film. I see. So that's what makes you so good at playing that character, because I actually saw that movie in the theaters. Oh, and I must say, you are quite very awesome as that character, okay. along with so many others that get to be in there such as my friend I got to interview with, Kim Vendel Havel, and most importantly, Jessica DeGico and Stephanie Shi and so many great actors being yeah. in there. Yes, it's a wonderful cast. <laughs> well, yes. But anyway, 
How is it like playing Hogan in the show Marvel's What If? It was a lot of fun and a, a tremendous honor to be uh, invited to be doing that, that role, to do Hogan. Um, I grew up loving uh, comic books. So when I found out that Marvel's What If was being converted from a comic book series to the show in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I was extremely excited as a fan. And after I auditioned, to, I auditioned for the role, um, I was extremely happy as I, I had a very big fanboy moment myself when I was cast. So it was it was it was a lot of fun, and I'm extremely grateful to be a, be part of that that universe. I see. So this is what makes you good at playing that character, because all I know is that I've seen it on Disney Plus, and that you, my friend, you are along with Chris Hemsworth, Jamie Alexander, Fred Tattersall, Max Millman, and so many others that you got to be with. And I was like, whoa, boy, <laughs> is it me or? Is that guy actually with Max Millman and my friend Fred Tattershore? Yes, I was. Actually, I was. I did actually do. We did it. We did. I did a second session for that episode, and I got to be with Fred virtually for that one. And he's fantastic. Ooh, well, that's very good, you know. But anyway, <clears throat> what was your favorite thing about playing, being in the show Monkey Kid as Mr. Tang? There's a lot of stuff I love being uh, being Mr. Tang in the Monkey Kid. Um, number one, it is with a fantastic group of artists, directors, and actors. Um, and I get to be a very silly person as well in this, in this show. It's probably one of the most fun experiences I've had ever. And I get to be someone who's, who thinks he's very smart and wise. But when, he, when deep down, he's just a, a super fan for all things Monkey Kid. So he gets to be a, a super fan in the show. So he get, he, I get a lot of chances to be uh, extremely silly. But I think the best thing about it is the group of characters, the actors that I get to work with, the directors, the voice director, everyone is just such a fun group to work with. I see. So that's what makes you very good in playing in that character, Monkey King. Kid, I meant. But <laughs> from what I can tell... You are, you made me laugh a lot as that character, you know, <laughs> along with so many great voice actors that were in it, such as uh, Steve Bloom and uh, yet many others that I begin to notice of. Mm -hmm. Which that's good, actually. Yes. But in some way, <clears throat> what was the best part about being in that movie, Superman Man of Tomorrow? Ah, Superman Man of Tomorrow. The best part? Uh, again, because I like I loved growing up. Watch, I grew up loving comics. Being associated with something with Superman was uh, again. A, I felt extremely lucky uh, to be invited to be part of that movie, and again to be in the room with some of the actors that I got to play with that day, uh, as well as one of my favorite directors as well to to guide us along for the whole, for the whole session uh, was such a thrill. So again, my my fan, my inner fan was probably the happiest uh, at that moment. I see. So that was the best part about being in that movie Man of Tomorrow. Because what I can tell, I've seen a lot of cast members being promoted in that movie, including Darren Crisis and uh, Zach Zachary Quento and Ike Amati, Christina Malesia, April Stewart, and you, Mr. <laughs> David Chen. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Along with some other actors that were fantastic as well. So, yes, of it, course. Was, it was a wonderful group. Of course. But anyway, <clears throat> which character that you have played in the past has been the most challenging to you and why? Hmm. In the past, I would probably, from an acting standpoint, uh, from, a, from a physical standpoint, I think anything that required any some of the video games I was in that required a lot of vocal stress where it was in a battle scene or a war or lots of fighting that they were, sometimes there would be two to 300 lines in a few hours and they would be all yelling and shouting. So vocally, I think that was probably the most challenge. Those were the type of most, most challenging types of roles I've had to do. Um, I recently did a, an English dub for a Japanese movie that hasn't come out yet. But that will be the most, I believe that's probably been the most challenging thing for me so far because it required me to be extremely grounded and extremely serious and extremely calm as a calm, 
uh, as a calm actor. And I even told the director after the session, I thanked her because it was, to me, I think it was probably the most challenging thing I've ever had to do. And I was grateful for it. I see. So well, that's what makes you so good at it. But <laughs> in some way, <clears throat> would you ever consider yourself to be part of the whole anime group when it comes to being part of anime shows that you would like to do one day? Uh, I would like to be a part of that group eventually. I think there are some amazing actors who are very good at, and at, be, at doing the craft of um, acting for dubs. Uh, I don't believe I'm there yet, but I have friends who are and they are amazing. So maybe mm -hmm. one day uh, if I work on it and if I improve my skills, uh, hopefully I can join them. But I, as a fan, I am extremely um, happy to be able to see, to call some of them my friends and also to watch their amazing work. I see. So that's what you begin to notice. <laughs> yes. But anyway, <clears throat> what do you like to do before voice acting? Before, uh, before actually working in a, in a session or before I became a voice actor? Before you became a voice actor. Oh, well, I think the easiest answer for me to say is I like, I love just watching movies and TV and cartoons. And I do that all the time. So I can, I still do that. Also. I'm still a fan of all of those things. So even on my spare time now between sessions uh, or if I'm getting ready for something or after my sessions, uh, I, I always go back to watching something. And usually it's a cartoon. So mm. uh, that's probably what I do. I probably, I just, that's what I did before. And that's what led me to the career that I have now. And, uh, and I still do it. So I'm still a, a cartoon kid at heart and a movie TV fan at heart as well. I see. <laughs> so that's what makes you all that. But anyway, <clears throat> do you usually do a lot of awesome stuff like hanging out with voice actors after your voice sessions? <laughs> Since the pandemic has started, it hasn't been as easy to do. But before the, before the pandemic, uh, at least during the session, at least in between sessions or during breaks or after a session, I, I would from time to time talk to some of the people I work with. If it's in a, it's, if it's in a, uh, in a cast recording session. Uh, sometimes, most of the time we would record one-on-one -on -one for video games, especially. And maybe I might pass somebody uh, and, and chat with them if they had time. Uh, but since the pandemic, uh, it's been, it hasn't been as easy to do. But from time to time, I will send text messages to friends to just stay in touch and, and say hello. I see. So that's what makes you good at that. Would you ever divine the legacy of your voice acting whenever you get to be part of any more of the animated shows? Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you get to be part of it, would you let your legacy of the, your voice acting continue on as long as you remain super awesome? <laughs> Thank you for calling. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, I would love to continue on whatever legacy that I end up having. Um, I just, I'm again, just extremely happy and am open to any type of opportunity to be part of all these cartoons that are, have already existed or, and continue on or be part of something new. So yes, I would love to continue on this, the legacy, any type of legacy that I have. I don't know what, where that is right now or what kind of legacy I do have. Uh, but one day, hopefully I can have a legacy uh, of those that I have admired in the business um, ever since I was a kid and even to, to this day. I see. So this is what makes you care. But anyway, <clears throat> well then, my friend, it was such an honor to finally gain to meet you at last, David Chen. It was an honor to meet you as well. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me. And I really enjoyed everything I wanted to ask you. Yes. <laughs> well then, <clears throat> I hope you have a wonderful and awesome day, and I hope to see you through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, my friend. Yes, I, I hope you have a wonderful day as well. Thank you for inviting me to do this with you. It's been a pleasure, and uh, I'm extremely grateful that you, you thought of me for something like this. And yes, uh, I look forward to, to speaking with you again. I will. That's what I do. Yes, and you continue, and you do it very well and continue doing that as well. Yes, I will. Hope to see you then, my friend. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>